Today we will be discussing our third activity on the Harlem Renaissance unit, which is art in the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, this activity will be based around the study of four artists who had a severe impact on the Harlem Renaissance. In the background slide, I did add a district layout of Harlem, uh, just to provide some geographical context for the lesson. The first artist we'll be discussing today is Jacob Lawrence, who was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 1917 and passed away in 2000. The art style he is most known for is dynamic cubism, which was a French style, but he applied it to the everyday life he saw in Harlem. The reason he applied this French style to the setting of Harlem is because he received art lessons in Harlem. And so he combined the artistic technique he learned in these lessons to just the life he experienced. The painting of his that we'll be studying today is his third panel of the Migration of the Negro 60 panel art installation. It depicts uh, the movement of African American families towards the North and definitely could have been influenced by his family's move from the rural South before he was born to New Jersey. The painting you see here is the third panel of the Migration of the Negro by Jacob Lawrence and it depicts the movement of African American families from the South to the North that took place in the 1910s and 1920s known as the Great Migration, which is a vocabulary word we studied earlier in the unit. As far as the artistic technique is concerned, you can see here that it's not the same kind of traditional art uh, you may be more familiar with. Uh, it's a little more abstract and not everything's as clearly defined. This is that influence from the, the dynamic cubism that we talked about in the last slide. The center of this painting, the African American family moving, uh, the two main parts of this that are important is to understand is the movement of a pack that all the, a lot of these families moved as families. It was not individuals moving to different places and that they, they weren't using cars. They were carrying things on their backs and that's to show the poverty that these families went through in the South and why they moved to the North to escape this kind of poverty. And then in the background of this painting, you can see the crows flying or the blackbirds uh, in the background past the horizon. And this definitely could be a reference, which some art critics have mentioned, of the escape from Jim Crow, which is that segregationist uh, legislation that was passed in the South after the Civil War and led to the division of African Americans from white people in society. The second artist we will be discussing is William H. Johnson, who was born in Florence, South Carolina in 1901 and passed away in 1970. Just like Jacob Lawrence, he was influenced by French style of art. He moved there uh, early on in life, and that's where he was exposed first to modernism, which is very similar uh, to the art piece we saw, the migration of the Negro in the last slide. Um, but at the same time, he was also influenced by European folk art. And that's where you're gonna see kind of the simplicity in his art and really just expressing the story in simple terms so everyone can understand it. Johnson moved back to the United States to Harlem in 1938 from France and the motivation for his move back to Harlem is the Federal Art Fund which was designed to bring an interest into arts into uh, lower socioeconomic communities through the help of federal aid. Johnson was a classically trained artist graduating from the National Academy of Design and the main motivation for him moving from the United States to France is his experiences of intense racism while living in the United States and something that definitely influences his art. This image is the painting Blind Singer by William H. Johnson. And the first thing that's designed to jump out at you when you look at this painting is how these characters look. Johnson wanted you to understand the fashion sense of the people of Harlem at this time, which consisted of being very well-dressed, but in bright clothing. And then on top of that, uh, he wanted to express another component of the Harlem Renaissance that we will discuss later, which is music. And he wanted to show this all, not only through them playing a guitar, but also where. The background of this painting is ambiguous, but it's meant to express that anywhere was the perfect location to play music. And commonly in Harlem at this time, was you playing on the streets or in parks as a group. It wasn't just in closed spaces and in studios. But most importantly, the main message that this painting is meant to convey is that idea of charity through the blind singer of the African American community getting together to rise up as one.
The third painter we'll be discussing today is Buford Delaney, who was born in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1901 and passed away in 1979. Similarly to the last two artists we've discussed, he was a modernist painter known for abstract expressionism. And although he was painting before his move to Paris in 1950, his stay in France and their artistic style definitely influenced his work later in life. And the biggest inspiration for his art was that idea of humanity as a whole coming together, seeing the beauty in everybody, which in a way was influenced by his mother's birth into slavery because he saw how you can come from such an evil place and move on in the world. And his peak artistic output was definitely in the 1930s in Harlem after his move there in 1929. This painting is the painting Can Fire in the Park by Buford Delaney. And the two main things of this painting that are designed to jump out of you are firstly, the color scheme, which is a great example of abstract art and also meant to make the characters in this painting somewhat ambiguous, although they have been noticed as African-American men. But the ambiguity of their race also plays in the other part of this painting, which is that commonly the idea of a, a garbage can fire in a city is, is an idea of homelessness. And Buford Delaney actually changes it to this idea of community that although these people are socioeconomically disadvantaged because of society, they can still come together as a community to enjoy life. The final artist we'll be discussing today is Palmer C. Hayden, who was born in 1890 in Widewater, Virginia and passed away in 1973. He is known as a prolific artist who ended up painting over hundreds of paintings during his life. And as a young man, Hayden worked as a porter and a bellhop in D.C. and he saw uh, those just working class stories there and that's what he began drawing as a young man. And then uh, his painting was put aside for a little bit because he ended up serving in World War I in an all black company which is another example of segregation during this time because it wasn't until the 1950s that the army became desegregated. But upon returning to America after serving in the war, he ended up taking jobs such as a janitor in New York, but continued painting. And it's his paintings that combine not only the African-American experience, but that environment and the nature around them of the city. So it's not isolated. It's putting African-American families in the world. This painting right here is A Midsummer Night in Harlem by Palmer C. Hayden. The name was designed to be a play on words from the Shakespeare play A Midsummer Night's Dream. And if you look in the top left of the painting, uh, to borrow an image from A Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. By taking these motifs and applying them to African-American art, Palmer C. Hayden is arguing that there is a side to the African-American experience that has not been explored in intellectual media because of their segregated life in the South. But at the same time, if you look beneath the moon in the part of the starry sky motif, uh, there's African-American families returning from church, which expresses the African-American experience of being religious, as well as their returning from the church to sit on stoops, which is a common part of life in New York City and shows a communal aspect of the African-American community in Harlem at this time. 